Hmm. Okay, uh, hmm. Well, the weather is really poor here today, and that means my connection is really poor. And so you may or may not be able to follow along with me today if we have too much buffering. But there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I've been experimenting, changing settings and things uh, while uh, getting ready this afternoon. And uh, it just keeps telling me that uh, the stream is not smooth. So uh, we're going to just go for it and try and see what happens. Uh, looks like I'm freezing up off and on so I guess uh, yeah, I've got something on the screen that's not supposed to be there hold on a second so I can, so I can get that to go out of the way there we go okay uh, if you're watching and if you can type something in the chat and let me know if there's too much lag and it's no good or if you can see it good enough uh, it would be helpful to me to know whether or not to proceed uh, with the poor connection that I've got. I have, uh, like I said, been clicking in and out and changing settings and trying to get it uh, to work better. And so far there's no solution, but it has been pouring down rain here today. And I think that the weather is really uh, what my biggest problem is, and I can't fix that. Um, so I apologize. Hopefully we'll be able to get something done anyway. But I'm going to have to kind of ignore my preview. Um, I'm going to not be able to see if you're seeing the right thing because it's there's just too much. Uh, I've got like 15 seconds of lag. <laughs> and I can't say something and then wait 15 seconds and see if it came out right. Um, so let's just uh, proceed and like I said if you are watching and you can put something in the chat and let me know if you're able to see anything well enough or not that would help appreciate it so moving right into what we're doing today we are uh, having a Thanksgiving uh, still life painting to focus on what we're thankful for and uh, I guess today I got to be thankful that I have a uh, solid roof over my head and I'm not getting wet and having leaks because it is really pouring out there. Um, so I hope wherever you are, you're uh, able to uh, enjoy sitting inside in the warm or outside if the weather's good. Um, I also uh, already drank my hot tea, so uh, I'm not sipping hot tea right now, but I did have a cup and it was yummy, it was mint flavored. So uh, I'm just thankful for small things today. Um, and I'm hoping my stream will uh, connect better. And uh, let's see here, oh, I've got to plug something in right quick. There. Hopefully that's going to help things. Uh, in fact, I wonder. Hmm, well, anyway. Um, okay, so. Uh, oh! Something just popped on my screen. Oh, nope, it went away. First, for like a, for a, a couple of seconds, it said uh, my stream health was excellent. Now it went back to poor again. So. I don't know what the deal is, but anyhow, um, so thankful. Uh, let's. I'm also thankful that I can paint a painting today, and I uh, am going to go ahead and show you. Uh, let's see here if I can switch to the screen that has my reference photo on it. I think that's the right one. Uh, so we'll just find out. I unfortunately have to wait 15 seconds to see if I press the right button and have the right picture 
up there for you. But what I'm hoping to do is show you my painting that is the reference photo we're using today. It's a painting that I created um, from a, a composition I made several, well, a lot of years ago. And I actually created this composition to uh, use to make a paper mosaic piece of artwork. But I adapted it to, for today's watercolor painting. And uh, what I want to do is show you how to make a line drawing of this. I did send the tracer out to one or two people who requested it. And if you have a tracer, I want to show you how to use your paper, it, whether it's this size or, let's get over here to this one. Uh, if you've got just a sketch in a, a little sketchbook and it's small and you want to make a drawing, uh, there's a couple different ways of, uh, I mean, you want to make the drawing on, you want to make a painting on watercolor paper that is larger than your sketch. What you can do is you can either uh, photocopy that and get it enlarged and print it out on a bigger piece of paper like this and then trace it onto your paper or you can um, draw grid lines on your uh, sketch that you made and then make corresponding grid lines on your paper and then uh, draw like that. Uh, I'm going to show you with this printout that I have the tricky way that I use to get my grid lines evenly spaced. Uh, so uh, my drawing ends right here and I didn't cut that part off. I probably should have but I didn't. Uh, but I just fold my piece of paper in half. Um, actually this piece of paper if I hold it to my my watercolor paper that I'm going to paint on I can see that it's a pretty good match horizontally for you know the width of my drawing is is a pretty good match for the width of the paper on the paint on but uh, my drawing is not as uh, wide well it's not as high uh, size wise here it doesn't really uh, match good so I'm going to start out with getting my uh, lines that go vertically and divide this vertically first because that's going to help me get a good idea of, of uh, the size of my squares. So I would just fold this piece of paper in half right over here. I would make this edge match this side edge of my drawing, my painting area. Fold that in half and crease it. And then I would fold that in half and fold the other one in half. And again, you got to match that line up with that line. So I put little lines here and, and make creases and then you can fold it this way um, and fold each of those in half. And then I take my ruler on here and I draw lines in those creases and then I flatten it all out and you can iron it if you want to or something. But then you have your, your drawing all nicely gridded and ready for you to use it to transfer to your uh, paper you're drawing on. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put lines on this watercolor paper. Now remember I said uh, horizontally it was a good match. Uh, vertically not so much. But I'm going to go ahead and, and mark off the middle of this. This paper is 12 by 16. So I'm going to go 6 inches down and just make a little mark. And I want to keep these marks light because this is my watercolor paper. It is what I will be painting on. So, uh, so I don't want to make really heavy lines on here that will uh, need to be erased because those really mess up the surface of the watercolor paper. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and see if that will make it easier to see what I'm doing with drawing these grid lines on here. And uh, just check the connections again one more time, see if I can do anything about the poor quality of my stream. Health. Let's see here. I 
wonder if I do this, if it'll let me back in. Some of the things that I can do here, uh, I'm a little afraid to do them because they might shut down my stream and I don't want to do that. Because then I don't have any way to get you uh, a link to get back in here. I'm just going to give it a try and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, we're not I think we got back in, and for the moment it says the stream is healthy, so let's hope that uh, sticks at that, and we don't get back in the uh, lagging, buffering, poor connection thing again. So what I'm doing is I've got a light line drawn across there, and I, as I was saying, don't make your lines or your dots or your marks on here too dark because we are going to want to erase these and we are working right on the watercolor paper and you don't want to destroy that surface. Okay, so now, um, let's see, I marked the center. Now, I want to not go all the way to the top because my, my paper is not as uh, high, my, my drawing is not an exact match. If um, let me think how I can say this, because I'm not really, I don't want to do math and and be stressed out. <laughs> so uh, what I've got is I've got this drawing, and I'm going to put it onto this larger piece of paper. But it's usually um, true that I can't just say that this enlarges exactly to this size. One or the other of these sides is typically not going to match. This paper is, where's the size on here? Five and a half by eight and a half. So it's five and a half inches this way, eight and a half this way. Now, if I doubled that eight and a half, it's 17, which is fairly close to my 16 inches wide that this paper is. But the five and a half, um, well, actually, you know what? That's, that's close to one way it's a little over and the other it's a little less. So it's, it's close but not perfect. Uh, and, and so you gotta keep that in mind when you're making your grid lines. This drawing, when it's enlarged to fit this paper, is not gonna go all the way to the top and the bottom. So um, right there is six inches. And if I wanna just go in and say five inches here and, and make my mark um, at the two and a half inch mark, which if I don't put the ruler this way, you're probably not going to understand what I'm talking about. Put the ruler here, and I'm going to stop at five inches. So I'm going to make a mark here at two and a half inches. And then another mark over here at two and a half inches. And that gives me a, an accurate line. Oh, I need one at five inches as well. I don't really have to have that one at five inches, but uh, it'll be helpful when we're looking at what we got going on. So I'm going to put a line across there to grid this off so I can um, make the drawing using the grid lines. That's how I would do that. And then do the same thing on the bottom. Make a mark at two and a half and at five and make another one over here. That helps me keep my lines straight on the paper. And uh, good it looks like the stream is still showing that it's healthy so maybe we've conquered the uh, bad connection difficulties so there's that and here's this one and then we just basically do sort of the same thing uh, I'm not going to worry about cutting some off from the sides I'm going to treat this like this paper is exactly the size that I want my drawing enlarged to. So that means I'm going to divide this in in uh, half in equal, just like, you know, put a mark here at 8. It's 16 inches wide, so I'm going to put a mark here at 8 and a mark here at 4. Mark here at 12, and then move the ruler down. Put a mark here at 8, mark at 4, mark at 12, draw light lines there. And then I see I'm going to have to go back and kind of erase my little dots. I've got them a little too strong. Uh, and I'm going to stop at these lines to remind myself that is as far as my drawing 
uh, or painting is going to go. So lightly grid off my watercolor paper to match the grid I have on my drawing. Put that ruler away. And um, now you could, again, you could do this right from your small sketch that you made, or if you have uh, an enlargement, it works either way. So what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to start to look at uh, how am I going to transfer this drawing onto this grid. Now, there's no hard and fast rule. You have to start at any certain point. You don't have to start at the center. You don't have to start all the way to the left. You don't have to start at the top. You start wherever it looks easy to you to start. So pick a place. And I'm going to look at this and say these uh, Indian corn uh, cobs here look like carrots. And that's almost in the center uh, in this square. So that's going to be my starting point. And I'm going to put that right there. And uh, let's see. Let me erase some of these marks are a little too dark, and I don't want those to cause me problems later. So I'm going to just lighten those up a little bit before I get started drawing. And uh, if you used, if you requested the tracer from me, then uh, a piece. If you requested the tracer, then hopefully you will have already got your um, your picture onto your watercolor, and you're not being bored. If you don't didn't get it done already, you can be working on that while we're drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my uh, paper, and on this corresponding block, I'm going to go right about in the middle and just start putting some things that look like the tops of carrots and um, the, this line starts right here. Uh, hopefully that's in this frame. That's where I started right there and I just made a little line and then I'm making this part of this right here and this goes over here to a little bit above the halfway mark so that's the angle that I've got there. I want that to go that way and this one just goes kind of above it there. Then I get the next one on, and you can look and see that in the center over here, it kind of t dips out a little bit beyond that line, and uh, so I'm gonna go right here and just make that little part that sticks out. Then I'm gonna make this go in and curve over, and it needs to go kind of up there and then head off the other direction and end up right about in there somewhere. And you don't need to keep that line really smooth and straight because it's going to be bumpy uh, corn kernels, which if you aren't sure what I'm talking about, it's this stuff right here. I went and picked some up at the store. I actually love fall because of all of this pretty stuff you can find in the store. Look at these little gourds I got. Aren't they pretty? They're gorgeous. <laughs> I saw a silly meme of that um, on Facebook. Let's see if I can get that picture out. Whoops, that doesn't do the right thing. Oh, you know, I forgot. Lag. So maybe it did do the right thing. Um, let me see what I can do. Oh, nope. <laughs> I got everything in and out where they're not supposed to be. So punch all the buttons one more time and hopefully that goes out of the way there and you can see this corn is called uh, flint corn but it's also known as Indian corn and I think it's beautiful it's decorative some people uh, use a knife and get all these kernels off here and put them in the pan and actually pop this corn but I'm not sure how effective or you know successful that is but look at these pretty gourds aren't these pretty I, I love fall, and so these fall still still lives are fun for me because I get to put all these really interesting uh, gourds and squashes and, and pumpkins and stuff into my still lives and paint them. And this right here, the texture of this, that's we're going to paint that. I'm going to show you how to get that modeled kind of a thing on there when we do uh, an acorn squash. I had an acorn squash 
for a sample, but I cooked it and ate it. <laughs> so I can't show you that uh, today. But anyhow, that aside, you're just up there inspiring me to paint pretty things. So back to the drawing. Uh, I'm just going to extend this out here. Now on the bottom, let me do this bottom edge first. This kind of comes right on around here and then it goes over and ends right about in there. So that's the angle that you want to put right there. And then it goes right along and just becomes, let's see, that's not, that's maybe about a third of the way over. Like that. And you use these lines as reference points to make sure you're getting your angles of your drawing correctly. And that's how you can uh, transfer a drawing, large or small, onto another piece of paper, larger or smaller, and get an accurate representation of your sketch that you made. So there, that's pretty good. Now I've got this acorn squash to put in here and again I'm just starting right about here and making that line go right in there and up above that line and do a little dip and then I want this to come up this part right here comes up less than half let's put that line on there right there uh, comes over about halfway in the square and it dissects about halfway in there so about halfway in there we come in and it comes over to about halfway there so that is that's the line between the wall and the table so that is in place and right below that is where this squash goes out of here so that gives me the angle to put that side of that squash in there and then you can come down in here you just see that it it just kind of goes wiggly like that and you know these squashes never all look the same so don't get too uptight about getting it perfect it doesn't have to be a perfect reproduction just something that looks pretty that's my goal make it look beautiful and, and never mind if it looks exactly like the reference photo or anything like that because that just puts unnecessary stress on on you when you're trying to just create something pretty. Let's see here. This one is losing track of where I'm at here. Just put a little something like that. And these are just guides. You're going to put this on here with your paint. So you don't really need to draw a whole lot of this. And as I said, don't worry about getting it exactly perfect because when we do this with our wet paper and paint, it's not going to stay exactly inside the lines anyhow, and we don't need it to. So put a little bit of these little specks just to remind me to do it. Now let's see, we've got another little bit of something coming up through here. I'm just going to put that. I've, I've got it a little bit lower on this than it is on here, but I don't think it's going to matter at all. Put a little bit right there. A couple of more little dots one over there that's pretty good that's a nice acorn squash even though it's not exactly the shape there I dipped in a little bit too much there and if I wanted I could erase and fix that um, I don't know if it's necessary but I'll just show you that angle was a bit too much so if I wanted to change it I just do that and then there it's fixed um, I am drawing my lines darker than you should be drawing yours I'm hoping you can see those. Let me see if I need to zoom in a little bit more so that you can see. Because I did forget about that. So, um, I'm going to put, let's put in the pumpkin next, I think. Because, yeah, there, hopefully, you, hopefully you can see that. Pop me something in the chat if you can't see it, and I'll make my lines darker. But I don't like them to be too dark because, as I said, they they uh, they won't erase without damaging the, the watercolor paper, and uh, and then they they just have to stay part of my drawing. 
All right, so I'm right up here at this point right here. And above that, about halfway up into that square, that's where this stem is. So I'm gonna just put this little stem here. It comes right back and above here is, is that line. Didn't get that quite as high up as it should have been, but it's close enough. All right, so that comes down here and this is gonna go up this way and out this way and make that little bit of uh, the, the base, you know, where the stem goes into the pumpkin. Okay, that comes up around there and around, and we'll just make that the end of the stem. And you know, what I usually do once I get this far into something like that, I can stop looking at this and just start looking at what I've got going on up here and make sure that whatever I'm putting in there looks good and that's really kind of more important than whether or not I've made it exactly match that went way up too high if I didn't make it exactly match my original sketch it, it's there's only some aspects of my original sketch that are going to be so important that I get them exactly right and I know what those are usually so um, so I don't worry about it now this line should have been over here a little bit more. Let's see if I need to worry. This line is here. See, look at this Look at this V right here. That's an easy uh, part, uh, an easy thing to see where to put it in. And if you put that in first, it kind of helps you. It gives you a good reference point for drawing your other lines. Uh, and this edge of this is not quite halfway. It's back a little. So that line really should have come over to about right here. I'm going to just change that right there. I know I did a lot of erasing right in that spot, but hopefully it'll be okay. All right, so now that is going to come down and just be a little V. Come down to about halfway mark here. And this is going to go right up to there, and this goes right over to there. And then that line continues right on down. And it's just kind of one part of the, the pumpkin side. Now let's put this gourd up here. It goes a little bit above halfway up there and curves around. And over here, let's see, let's put this side on right here. About here comes down. And this is going to come around and over to here and down to the side of this acorn squash. So just put that over that way somewhere and that gourd is now positioned in there and we'll put this up and around and it comes back down let's put the stem in out here right there and then it just kind of goes up and we've got a circle just look at that as a circle right there And, um, and you know what, I think I'm too zoomed in. I'm going to zoom back out because I'm not going to be able to keep remembering to look up there and wait for the lag to catch up to me. Um, you know, I might be changing my mind because I, I just don't, I don't want you to not be able to see these lines I'm drawing. I'm going to try my best to, to keep it in the frame working like this for a few minutes and see if I can do it. Um, right here, this is a little circle, and you can see if you imagine a, a cross lines in there, it would, there would be a line dividing that block in half and that one in half, and this circle is sitting right in there inside of it. So imagine a line here and a line here, and we've got a circle just kind of sitting right in there. So just put that in place right there, and then use that as a guide. I drew that very faintly. Hopefully you can see where I did just watching where my pencil goes um, I've got that very faintly in there and I'm going to just make this into a stem here and I'm going to bring this right on down here and out and around and it connects right in there and then this part is going to go up in that way and like that and out and around like that and then just put you some marks on there for the the leafy part that's around the top that is pretty good 
like that. So that is now drawn on there. I'm going to go ahead and erase that little bit of a circle because I don't need that on there anymore. And while I'm at it, let's see, I'm going to get my plastic eraser because this, this eraser leaves way too much eraser dirt all over my table and it gets in my paint. I don't like that. So, okay, I'm erasing some of these guidelines as I'm finished with them because that will that way they won't be left in my finished painting. Now don't forget this is the tabletop line. I think we might, let's see, it might be high enough it needs to go in here, which is a little different from my original drawing, but it doesn't hurt anything. So putting getting rid of that line. And that's good. Now I'm going to go back to working on the pumpkin. Uh, this line needs to come right on down here. And that gourd and that thing are sitting behind the corn. And, and that is behind the pumpkin. Now um, I'm going to come right out of here. And you can see this line on this side of the pumpkin. It goes maybe uh, about two-thirds, maybe three-quarters of the way over into this square. So somewhere in this vicinity is where that line is going to connect to. So I'm just going to make that curve right there. Now I've got that put on there. And then uh, you can make the next line go down to about right here and start putting in these lines here. And I don't really try to get real stuck on getting it exactly where it is in my reference. Just not going to do that. That is a good pumpkin. It doesn't look exactly like this one, but it's a nice one anyway. Um, let's see. I think I will like the look of this. I will like the look of this a little better if I continue this over a little farther in front of that gourd. Yeah, I just like the look of that. Okay, so now I'm going to, now that I've showed you all this, I'm just going to draw. I'm hoping that you're going to just draw too. Uh, I'm going to move it back out a little and then you can just be drawing your drawing onto your paper.
That's not exact, but it's close enough. And again, this is just a kind of an idea to keep your hand in sort of the right direction when you're working with your paintbrush because whatever we put here is not going to uh, stay exactly inside these lines. pretty good. Now I'm going to erase some of these lines that I don't need so I don't forget to do it and so that um, I don't get confused and leave something out. Or like I said, forget that it's in there and paint over it. Because once you put water or paint over top of these pencil lines, they won't erase anymore. They're like set in into your paper. And I don't want my finished piece to have grid lines on it in the finished painting. So I'm erasing them now before I forget. And if I accidentally in erase any of the um, drawing, it's easy to put that back in. And if you don't erase very much of it, you might not even really need to put it back in because you'll just know that there's supposed to be a line there. And so when you're painting with your paintbrush, um, stuff will get where it's supposed to be. See that line goes up there, so this one can erase. And I'm going to go ahead and put, I've got a walnut sitting down here, kind of in this vicinity. And a walnut is a really bumpy uh, elliptical sort of a shape. That's a good walnut. And then this is actually a couple of almonds. I don't know if you've ever seen almonds when they are still inside of their shell. But they are really strange looking. So I'm going to put a couple of almonds right there. And I can erase these lines. Okay, the only thing left now is to put the all of this stuff back here. And that is, you know, it's, it's this stuff. You can make it straight, you can make it curved, uh, whatever you want to do. This is a little bit wild looking and it's kind of starting to come loose. I've got some pieces torn off, but we're gonna we're gonna paint something like that. It's gonna be really pretty and the the uh, the way we paint it and the color we put in it is going to sell what this is. So again, you don't need to be too stressed about getting this exactly uh, like my, like your sketch or my sketch or whosoever sketch you're following. Um, so I've got this coming in here and then I've got something coming out up here and it goes up and then it kind of makes a little 
like this is one little strand of something sticking off here and it's not a smooth shape so you don't have to make it a smooth shape that right there is the line of the table coming across there and don't you don't want to forget those because uh, if you don't put those in then your piece kind of loses something when you start painting it you, you're uh, you lose track of what is what there okay so now I'm going to put this bottom one on here and this is just going to come let's see out and up and over And back down and around like it's just a piece of that stuff kind of folded over on itself or something. This needs to be rounder right here. I do want to keep it natural looking don't lose track of what it is I'm drawing. Now I've got something coming out of here and up and around and it goes over that uh, table mark there and up kind of up this way. And I've got just some jagged edge that's meant to look like where the tip of it is folded over and then this one goes back in here and then I'll put some shading in that. Now I've got um, another piece kind of looks like, like this one just sort of sticking up in there and it crosses over. I'm gonna, I didn't make that one go up quite as much as it should so this one may just cross right over into that. And that looks like it's Another piece there. Okay, so then I've got this piece coming out along here and going up this way. And I'm going to want it to go up higher. And I'm going to have to get it because I didn't put that one in the same place in my this sketch as I did in my original. It's going to need a little bit of an adjustment, which doesn't hurt anything. Something back there, put the table line, the table line. Oops, I didn't get that quite straight. Uh, and we've got a little bit of something that's going to be probably just a shadow on the table there. And now I want to get this edge in here. Let's try a little bit there. And that looks pretty good. So there is my drawing ready to go. I'm going to put my sketch out of the way, put my uh, line drawing out of the way, put this off the table, and then get all this um, eraser dirt. Get that out of the way, get my erasers moved, and just use this paper towel. I'm going to get all this eraser dirt off my table because if I don't get it off my table, it will end up in the, in the paint or on my paper and in the, in the paint and it will cause the paint to all puddle up and stay in one dark spot. It might or might not be where I wanted it to be. So moving all of that over here out of the way is an important thing to stop and do. And I've got this whole little puddle of eraser dirt and Get it off the table into my hand, and I think I'm going to just have to drop it on the floor and sweep it up later. Okay, clean tabletop. I'm going to get set up to paint. So I've got all my clean paper towels, all my paint brushes. I've got clean. Um, let's see here the right one. Uh, I've got clean uh, water and uh, clean water in my water containers. Get the lid off my paint palette. Get my drawing back over here. Now if you didn't draw, I drew this on a watercolor block. If you drew on a, a piece of 
paper that's not taped down, definitely you're going to want to tape that down because uh, you don't want, we're going to use a lot of water, we're going to do a lot of wet and wet technique and we don't want our paper uh, warping up. So either tape it down to a board or, um, or use a watercolor block, which a block, again, is when the edges are all uh, glued together and there's usually one little section where it's not, where you can slip when you're finished painting, you can slip the end of your paintbrush in between there. See, you can see that. Uh, and, and break this top sheet off there when you're done and when it's all drying flat again. And then it'll look like this one here, my sample. This, that's what I did with this. This was stuck right on here. And when I was finished painting it, I let it dry the whole way, completely dry till like the next day. And then I took it loose from there. And so uh, that is how you do that. Now, uh, I've got a lot of mess going on in my paint palette. I don't always clean it out, and that kind of bugs some people. Uh, I, I don't start with fresh, clean paint every time. I reuse a lot of this stuff that's, see, it's all, it's dried in there right now. That's, that's not wet paint. It's not paint puddles that I've already mixed and got ready to go. It's just dried leftover from the last time I was painting. But there's colors and stuff in there that I like to see. It just kind of, um, I don't know, sparks something. I enjoy looking at it, and I like to uh, reuse that paint, and I get ideas from, oh yeah, I could use whatever color, try different color combinations, because it just happens from what I see in the paint palette. So that's why I really don't erase that. And also, I mix a lot of my own darks, uh, and uh, just kind of swirling all that stuff together to kind of clean up the palette, and and put water in it and mix it all together, I can get some really good darks and dark browns. You don't always want to do that because you'll get a muddy color, but in, in certain uh, applications, uh, that mud is what you're trying to paint, so you might as well use it. Um, all right, so now I'm going to uh, take a little break here, make sure you've uh, everybody's had a chance to get caught up and get ready uh, to paint. Got your water ready. Let's see, there's my water. Paper towels, brushes, picture to paint on. Water to have a drink of. So I'm going to take a little drink of water. And uh, again, if you have any questions or uh, want to say hi or anything, <laughs> put that in the chat. And take a drink of your water. I'm going to just check how we're doing on our stream here. Let's see if I've got things set up right. Looks good, so, so let's keep going. Okay, I'm gonna start with this, um, I have two one inch angled, these are actually called shaders. It's an angle brush. This one's older, the bristles are, sh are shorter, it's a little more worn, it's also kind of puffed up a little fatty. It was a, it was a thicker paintbrush to begin with. This one's a, got a little bit flatter, smoother look going on there. So I'm going to use this one. And first I'm going to paint the background back here behind uh, all of the uh, produce. So I'm going to turn my paper around upside down. I'm going to put this out of the way. Put one right here to, to blot with if necessary. And I'm going to put clean water all over. So did I, let me do one more quick check make sure I erased all those grid lines. and got all the eraser dirt off the paper. I think I did pretty good. Um, I guess I will go ahead and erase this line. It will when I, when I finish painting it and frame it, I will probably put it down lower than that line anyway, but just to be sure that I don't have a line there messing something up. 
later. I'll go ahead and erase that. Okay, so water, clear, clean water all over all of the area that would be considered the, the wall behind your produce here. There's a couple of little tiny small spots. We'll get that later. You don't need to worry about those too much right now because those are small enough areas we're going to uh, not have any trouble making the color smooth and you know getting a smooth flat appearance of, of a wash like like we're doing here this this larger area the way to get a nice smooth color all across the whole thing is to get your paper wet and do a wet and wet wash all over the whole thing all at one time so you don't have weird brush strokes and stuff uh, and I just remembered I want to change this so you're not having to look at the top of my head <laughs> going to work. Except it does take the reference photo out. Let me see if I've got the reference photo that I can turn back on in here. I don't think I have it. Hmm. Alright, let me get a different one. Let's see how this screen does. Well, it won't have my paint palette. So that's not good. Well, it's just going to have to be this one. And, turn, oops, wrong thing. Turn that off. You can see that I got a kind of a weird setup going on here because that up there, <laughs> see now I have two right hands. Um, ignore that part up above there. Or maybe I'll just move this reference over to there. That's pretty good. We'll go with that. But I have a separate camera on that, on my paint palette, hoping that I can get it showing the best way possible for you. So, okay, back to putting water on here. You want it to be all nice and wet. You don't necessarily want there to be puddles of water on here. I'm putting a lot of water on because I've got a lot of area to get moistened uh, all at one time. So I put a lot of water on to get started and then I can just spread it around as needed once I'm ready to put the color on here. And I can just turn my board or my watercolor block around as needed so I can get my brush in to all the little places where I want the water. Now you do want to be cautious not to get the water over onto the gourds and the pumpkins and the squash uh, where you don't want your dark background color because everywhere that you put this water that's where the paint is going to flow to. It's like it's, you know, we're, we're setting up for a party here. We're putting water everywhere the party is happening and then when we put the watercolor paint on here that watercolor paint is going to run all over everywhere that we put water that's that's how it moves from one area of your paper to the next is through the water that you put on there all right let's see here a couple places in there all right that's good now that's all wet, and you see it's not really running wet, it's just um, plenty wet. I'm gonna see now that the sheen doesn't go all the way right up to the edge of that pumpkin right there. And I do want it to do that. I don't want it to stop too soon because then the paint will stop and there'll be unpainted paper there. All right, so that's like that. Now I can see I've got this nice sheen across my page there. So it's all wet everywhere along in here that needs to be. And I'm going to go over to my paint palette and I'm going to paint an, a dark background on here. I've done this a couple of different ways and none of the ones I did so far uh, I was 100% happy with. 
One of them came out too purple, and I didn't like that, so I've grayed down my purple with some indigo blue. I have a, it's just like Windsor Violet that I put in the puddle here, and then I put some, uh, <coughs> excuse me, put some indigo blue in it, and a couple other blues, and then as needed, I just pull other stuff that's on the paint palette over in there, and until I get a color that I like. So these other blues and even a little of this green, I can just pull that over in there and get a nice uh, dark purpley gray color going. And uh, I think I'm gonna want it darker than that because see, this is, this is only gonna be about like that dark and I need a darker value behind all this produce in order to make it uh, push the produce forward or at least a darker color. So I've got a bunch more indigo, a little more Windsor Violet, and that's just a really, really dark blue with a bright um, blue-violet color. Put a little more of that green in there. That seems to be pretty good, so I'm gonna put that in there. Now that's nice and dark. And I can just start putting that in here, and uh, because my paper is wet, I'm not going to get hard edges as I smooth this paint around everywhere that I want it to go behind the um, husks of the corn and behind the pumpkin and everything. Put it right across there. And pick up some more and then if I want to darken it even more than this I can just go right back into my uh, indigo and just put some right on the paper and because the paper's wet that isn't going to hurt anything at all to so just let it kind of mix right there on the page we don't want to keep adding any more water to this though I've got plenty on the edge there. And just spread that around and as that uh, dries it'll really spread out and smooth out on the paper and you get a really nice pretty wash back behind here. Uh, I do want to add a bit more color right in there because I want to keep it nice and dark behind this pumpkin. And behind here, that's really going to make that come forward and be real pretty. So I'm going to, while I'm at it, just darken that too. That's way darker than I intended, but I'm, it's on there, so now I'm going to work with it. Let's put a little bit more indigo on there. Let's spread that down into here. And as long as I do this while the paper's wet, I can move this all around and it's going to not hurt anything. Now let's see, there's that little bit showing through right there. I'm going to go ahead and put color in there while I've got it in the paint palette and on the brush. So that's behind there. That's pretty good there. That's tabletop, so I'm not going to paint that. Okay, keep moving this way. And I want to blue that down a little bit more. Put a little more water in it. Put a little bit of that green over in there to change it up just a little bit. And again, as long as your paper is still wet, you can keep working with this. And you won't get hard edges and splotchy uh, appearance going on in your background. I'm using just the tip of my uh, angle brush there to get into those tight spaces. Get that color going in there. Now over here I'm going to add a little bit more water. It won't hurt because this gourd is going to be a lighter color. So it'll still stand out against this background, even though this side might be a little lighter than the other side was. I don't want to get it too light.
again with the tip of the brush just kind of spread that color around there where the paper's wet and so that it goes right up to the edge of the board. While it's still wet, I can smooth a little, but you don't want to do this once it's uh, starting to get more dry than wet. And just dry a little of that color right out of there. Spread it this way a little bit. There, I think I like that background on there. It's darker on this side than it is on this side, and it's just got some pretty color going on in there. And um, and my, my pumpkins and gourds are going to really stand out pretty against that dark background there. So I'm rinsing all that blue color out of my brush now, because the next thing we're going to do is put water on these acorn squash, and I don't want blue on them, so rinsed all that color out of there so that brush has no paint in it and I'm going to put that down and switch to a, a half inch flat angle brush and I'm just going to test if it's clean I usually try to clean them before I put them down but see that's not got any color coming out of it so I know that's clean so I can take this and put clean water right over top of these acorn squash This whole painting is about painting wet in wet. So it's kind of a nice exercise if you're wanting to practice that. Because there are some uh, some tricks to it. Some, some things like as we paint these acorn squash, you're gonna see um, if you paint the, the stripy parts on too soon, your your other your second color that you paint into the wet paint will spread too much so there's a little bit of a learning curve there and you need to practice working on how wet your paper should be before you add your other color you know just what happens when you're painting wet in wet how much does how much wet does it need to be so I'm just making sure I've got water all over the surface of both of my acorn squash, not counting the stems, but just paint right all over that. Now as I'm working on this one, this one's drying just a little bit, which is good. It's got slightly less sheen than that had, it's just slightly less wet, um, and, and, and that's how you want it. You don't want it to have that really uh, strong sheen on there that will be too wet uh, at that point so um, you can also kind of touch it and, and feel if it's really really moist it's your your uh, paint that you put on there is going to run too much and so I'm going to put that brush down and pick up my round brush and grab some uh, sap green I want a lot of sap green and I'm going to throw it into this edge of uh, the blue greens that I had going on here. And I've got that turned more green. It's a greeny gray blue, though. It's not really sap green anymore because it's got that blue that was in, in there is in it. And I'm gonna actually grab a little bit more of indigo and I'm gonna put it on that side of it there. And I'm just gonna pull a little of the indigo over in here till I've got a dark, uh, really dark blue green color going. Now I think I want a little bit more sap green in that. Okay so now with that really loaded on my brush here I'm just going to come over here and touch a couple of, like I'll touch that spot right there. You see how, oops I forgot a step. Hold on. Let me dry that right out of there. Okay um, going back to this brush. Sorry. I'm, trying to think about whether my stream is 
working good and and if we have lag or not at the same time while I'm thinking about what I'm painting and forgot this step. You need to get some really, really, really pale yellowy color with a little bit of a tinge of uh, either uh, burnt sienna or something like that. I just use other mess that's in my paint palette because I don't need very much of it. It's going to be really watered down so I'm not going to have to worry that it's too muddy. So this is one of those instances when you can use what's in your paint palette. But anyway, I'm just spreading a bit of a, a tan sort of a color all over that acorn squash there. That's my base color. <coughs> I think too, from I, I uh, did a little bit of research online. I think when they're striped like this that I'm making, I just added a bit of yellow in there just for some variety. Um, when you're when there's this color that I'm making these. I think that means they're not quite ripe. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I think that's what that means. Okay, I'm gonna get less color in my brush and just spread that around. And what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna make it a little bit mottled. I'm gonna take some, uh, some of my green over here and just put a little bit of green in the bottom, like that. Rinse that out of my brush completely and spread that a little bit more because I want it to be very nice and subtle right there. Okay, then I'm going to actually take a little bit of uh, Scarlet Lake, which is maybe the same as your Cad Reds and stuff like that. I just want a very, very pale orangey color and I'm going to put a little bit of that right up there on that side. Scrub that in a little bit. I can actually put a little bit of that right on this one too, not much, and uh, that's pretty good. So that gives me, that's where, now we're back to where we were. This is where you need it to be not uh, shiny anymore. It wants to be wet, but not shiny. And where I just put that color on, it's still shiny right there. This one's shiny all over. This one over on this side, it's about perfect. It's still wet, but it's not got that sheen. So now if I touch this color um, green that I made in there, it starts spreading a little bit. Let's see, maybe I need to zoom in so you can see that good. Um, and, and then you're going to take the tip of your brush, move those out of the way, and it's, remember it's loaded up with my uh, sap green that has a bit of indigo in it, so it's a really dark blue gray, gray green color. And I'm just going to start putting a little bit of this in here. And I'm just going to spread it into the wet area. And it starts to spread out a bit into the, that wet paper. And it just kind of softens down in there so you have nice uh, soft edges happening. And you can vary your color up a little bit. Put some of the, the darker blue maybe near the top and de down near the bottom here. So you got a little bit of variation happening in the color. And keep your brush wiggling very lightly over the surface of your paper. So you're just sort of like tickling color into that wet paper there into the color that you already had going on. And it gets a really beautiful representation of what those acorn squash look like. Don't forget to vary up your color a little bit. And that also helps uh, give the appearance that you're, uh, 
your squash is not a, a smooth, straight-sided thing. There's, it's got dips and bumps in it. And you'll see that more from when you get your, uh, your color variation happening. Now that's pretty good. I kind of am not real pleased with this area or that one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that to dry, and then I can use a clean, damp brush and kind of smudge that a little bit. So on the whole, I think I like how that one looks. Let's just see if I can take a little, little line right there. That's pretty good. I like that. Now I'm going to do the other one the same way. It may be a little too dry. I'm going to just lay a little bit of water, clean water with a clean brush. Just kind of lay a little water in over top of that. Just a little bit. My brush is really damp more than wet so that I can get this color, like I said, I'm going to just tickle it into that wet paint, wet, wet paper surface. And it spreads just the right amount. It gives me that really pretty mottled appearance. What I'm going for is this, like like on this squash right here. Or, yeah, see how that like that right there is just perfect. That's what I'm the look that I'm going for on here. I think I like that one, just like that. Okay, so those two squash are basically done. Oh, now I'm looking up at my screen and I'm seeing that my reference photo was probably totally in the way while I was painting this squash over here. Hopefully you were able to follow along on the other one. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make that reference photo even a little bit smaller. So I want you to be able to see it, but you also really need to be able to see uh, the, where the paper I'm working on is. All right, so that seems to be good, and I'm going to rinse the color out of that brush because I'm done with that at least for the moment. And now I think um, I'm going to do the pumpkin next because most parts of the pumpkin are not bumping up against anything that is still really wet. Like, I just painted this one, and it's wet enough that I don't really want to paint that right now or this corn because I, they might run together. Sometimes that is exactly what you do want. You do want things to run together. So, like I said, this is kind of a good learning uh, piece because you can uh, practice and learn these things, learn when it looks good for them to run together and when you don't want them to run together and how to prevent that from happening. If you know how to make it happen, you also know how to prevent it from happening. I'm just going to clean a little bit of my background color out of the side of this gourd here. So I want that to not look wrong when I get to painting that. So I'm cleaning out real good, but good enough, I guess. Okay, now, um, Let's see, I'm going to get my pumpkin all wet, 
just like I did everything else so far on this piece. Just put color, all, I mean clear water, all over where your pumpkin is. Now I do want to be cautious on these edges. You don't really need to be 100% um, accurate right up at the top there because if a little bit of my orange gets in the green stem area that blends together and that's one of those areas where it does look good but I don't want my pumpkin blending into the background or running outside of the boundary here so I'm going to put clear water carefully just where the um, edges of the pumpkin are and all over the surface of the pumpkin and I do also want to keep this uh, the straw part of the corn. Uh, I want to keep the orange color out of there so that we have it looking like this is definitely in front of this pumpkin. So I'm going to carefully put my line of water across there so that my orange pumpkin color does not run down into the straw here. This stem is not really super important that the pumpkin color does not get into there because the green that I'm going to put on that stem is a darker color than the orange that I'm putting in the pumpkin so the stem color will cover up any mistakes that might happen there. Okay so I've got water all over the pumpkin and it does still have the sheen on it. If you can hopefully see that. I can't tell in my screen if I'm getting it so just hold it at different angles and hopefully one of them has got it so you can see it there. Uh, so there's a nice sheen of moisture on that pumpkin. Now I'm going to take this area here where I've got my, um, what did I put there? I put the light color for the blush that I put on the acorn squash. Uh, I'm going to just mix some uh, uh, Scarlet Lake right into that. Might be a little too much, so I'll just use the edge here. Now I'm going to grab some quinacridone gold. You could also use uh, yellow ochre or pretty much any uh, golden yellow color you might have in your paint palette. I'm just going to pull a little bit of that Scarlet Lake over into it just to kind of start it going towards orange, but it doesn't really have to be real orange yet. And then I put my brush in the water and rinsed. Oh, I'm telling you all this stuff and you can't even see the paint palette. <sighs> Sorry. I'm uh, a little frazzled because of getting started with no, uh, without a good stream signal. Um, okay, so I, I mixed this. This is mostly quinacridone gold in, in a little bit of color that was there before. That is the Scarlet Lake, and I just put a little bit of that Scarlet Lake over into the quinacridone, and it's like that. Then, after all that mixing, I've got too much color in my brush, so I put it in the water, give it a little rinse, and then just come straight over here. And that's enough color for the first layer of color that I want to put on this pumpkin. Now, we need to talk about uh, our light source the light in this is going to be coming from the upper right over here, coming this way. Uh, that's going to allow me to put some nice shadows right on here. So I want to keep some light hitting the top of this pumpkin. So that's why I got that really light color there. It's going to be darker over on this side, so I can go ahead and get some of the darker color started over in here. Obviously, it's going to end up being much darker than this is right here, but we're putting on the first layer of color. So I'm just kind of laying this in here where it would be uh, that our lightest color would be because you want to start with the lightest color and then go back in and paint the darker stuff over top of that. Got some nice good orange color happening over here where it's going to be less in the direct light. And again, what color I've got showing over here right now is going to actually be the 
uh, lightest. I'm, I'm painting the lightest stuff. <coughs> and I'm going to just draw some dark, darker orange right up into that. While it's wet, I'm laying the flat of my brush like that right on my paper and pulling that color up into there. So now I've got the first wash of color on the pumpkin. I'm going to let it dry a little bit and then I may start, uh, I, I can either let it dry completely then wet it again and put the darker color over the top or I can wait till it's lost some of that sheen and start putting in some of the darker color kind of like glazing it over the top there and either way works. You just have to kind of practice both ways and see which way you like best. I'm going to stop for a second and uh, let that dry a bit while I take another drink of water. <coughs> Finished one bottle. I got another bottle right here to go. As soon as I need the next one. Okay. Um, now I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to get a little bit of, I believe this is Perlene Violet that I've got right here. It's a redder uh, purple color, a bit redder than the Windsor Violet. Uh, and I'm going to just put some of that there and then get it on my brush and drag it right over here into this puddle of orangeness that I have going on. <coughs> it darkened it right up. And I'm going to just lay some in right here at the edge. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and let me zoom in because I want you to see how that it is, um, the paper is still wet enough when I put this paint on here, uh, it starts to to spread out into the wet area where it's still wet on this paper. So I can draw some paint up into there, into that little um, crevice there. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe I shouldn't have drank water. <coughs> anyway, it can start going up into there. And it just spreads out all nice and smooth, just like what we did with the acorn squash. So I'm going to just think about where this would be in the most shadow and the color where the color would be darkest, and just kind of pull some of this darker color uh, up into those areas, starting with laying some dark color in right down here at the base where it would be darkest. Keep in mind the shape of this pumpkin. It's got these, it's got these these grooves in there, so you can see it's a nice bright color um, right out here in the part that's sticking out, and it's darker in these crevices, and it and it's like darker on this side because the light is right here in my studio. So this this is darker than this is up here, but you've still got little dark lines going up in there. So. Um, that's that's what you want to try to recreate on your paper here. And again, I am laying my brush down on here and dragging it up. Uh, right now, I've got to get some lighter color because this brown is too dark for over here. I want to go really orange here. And I have learned that you can use um, Opera Pink mixed with your yellows and get some really fresh, pretty uh, orange color mixed up there. And I like to mix my own orange because I can control how um, yellow or not yellow it is. So I'm going to just put this bright color in here. really orange my pumpkin right up. And I don't want to kill all of the yellow that I've got right there. 
I'm going to keep some of that in. And I want to keep some over here. And this is kind of dark, uh, kind of dry. So I'm going to just take a clean brush and lay a bit more water right on here. So that I can keep my paint moving freely around on this thing while I'm working on it. Once again, don't uh, totally cover up all of that yellow. And I don't always remember to do it, but I think it's helpful to put the paint on, go in the same direction every time, instead of like put some this way and then put some this way. That's not always going to get you the best result. I'm going to keep something darker right up in there. I want to put it on while the paper is plenty wet so that it can spread out good. And same thing for right here. I'm going to get some really nice deep color going in there. I've also got a perylene maroon that makes some really good uh, golden brown uh, red orange color. A little of that on here too. I want rich color. Making these uh, shadows and creating the form here. So I kind of experiment sometimes with uh, what is getting me the right color at the moment. Right now I think I like this uh, Pearly, yeah, pearly maroon. It looks pretty on there. And if it's too dark, once it's dry, I can take a, a clean, damp brush and uh, pull a little bit of it back off there. And I'm going to put a whole lot more of my Aurelian yellow into my mix. Lay that on here. But then what I want to do is wipe that color out of my brush and drag some of it back off there to, to keep a highlight happening right there. So I'm going to yellow this up too, but I am also going to drag some of that back off there for a highlight. Then I want to yellow this up over here. I want a lot more orange than I had intended, but still works. Okay, now I'm going to clean the, uh, clean the paint out of this brush. Put that one down. Make sure this one's clean. I'm going to use this one to just clean up this edge here because I do want a nice edge on this um, straw part of the corn. So my brush is really damp, but it's not drippy wet to do this part with. Because if you get too much water on there, it'll run up into your pumpkin and make a, a cauliflower or a bloom, which is not what we want right at that edge. That's a pretty good edge going there. And I may glaze a little more color on that, but I'm going to let it dry for now before I add any more color to that pumpkin. So I'll get back out again where we can see everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
Now, I think now would be a good time to paint uh, the, the tabletop because we need that to dry so we don't want to paint in here and we don't want to paint in here yet and this we're going to save till last to do that part because because this is what I want to be the focal point and I want to get all these other pieces in here so that I, uh, uh, I can see where they're at and that helps me know the value and the color and stuff that I want to put in here and, and the amount of detail to keep this being uh, my center of interest. So I'm going to use, uh, I think I'll use a combination of these two brushes to put clear water all over what is the tabletop here. And I guess I'll start with this side and just go ahead and put it in. I've got a little tiny bit of color coming off this brush, but it isn't going to hurt anything because it's considerably lighter than the color that I'm going to paint on the tabletop. And that's just, it. that may just be a matter of my water starting to get a little bit dirty from paint in it. So just get water just like we did with the, the background, the wall behind the pumpkin and gourds. Same exact process. And here it's not going to matter a whole lot if you get a little bit of this up into the, the corn um, or, or this squash because um, we're going to paint some shadows on there and also there's a thing called reflected light so you might actually see a little of the floor color up in there and uh, as long as you don't get hard edges it doesn't hurt anything. Also, you can put water right over the top of these uh, nuts here because the way we're going to paint those, this walnut is going to be much darker than the table color. And we can uh, lift paint out of the almonds and it will actually give them a good uh, base color. And painting right over them is going to help make it easier to, to do the wood grain that I want to include here for the tabletop. Alright, so I'm going to just paint around the straw over here. And I'm going to paint right over that part because that's a shadow on the tabletop, so that doesn't hurt to get the tabletop color on it. It's going to actually help it. And then just put a little water between all of these strange angled bits of where the corn husks are sticking off every direction. Get a nice smooth edge here where the tabletop meets the wall. Now I'm just going to lift it up and look at where I've got the sheen of moisture and that will help me see if I've missed any place that I need to get water. And make sure that I've still got that sheen going on over here where I got started. This is where I use a whole lot of water because by the time I get from one side of it to the other, it has started getting dry, a little drier than I want it to be. All right, now I'm going to um, to put like a wood grain on here. Uh, let me see if I can show you my, my sample painting. I'm going to just put a base color on and then I'm going to drag some darker bits of color in. Uh, and that's going to create that wood grain. So to do that, I'm going to just take this little puddle that I've got here that used to be for my pumpkin color, and I'm going to add some yellow ochre, or even maybe some raw sienna, either one of those colors, and then water it way down. It's okay if it gets some of these other colors um, off of the paint palette in it, because those just kind of help to brown it down a little bit and I want a brown tabletop. 
So I'm going to just put a real watery mix of this color on here. I think I got some eraser dirt in my paint palette. Let's fish that out of there. That's not going to help anything. Okay, so now I'm going to just start putting uh, horizontal strokes left to right all over my tabletop here with ample amounts of water. And you don't need to uh, get a smooth covering of uh, color on there. You don't, in fact, want a smooth, <coughs> excuse me, a smooth covering because that's not how it would look if this was a wood tabletop. There would be some variation of color. Making it a little bit more uh, brown color as it goes back in the back there but uh, do it in a way that you can drag a lot of the paint back off there because you want a light value but a darker color if that makes sense to you. And there's a couple little spots in here uh, which we'll probably come back to later because I need to fix that. I got, uh, the wall color came down in there. But if it helps you to do that now, you can go ahead and put the tabletop color back there just so you are reminded that that's what that is. Now I'm just going to start putting some darker color. And I can use my um, Perline Violet. And I can add in some Burnt Sienna. And I think I want to get the, the more reddish brown color more toward the front here. Not so much in the back. So let's see if maybe I can pull that color out a little bit better there. And a, a couple of places you might even put in a little tiny bit of a bluish color just for a shadow color in your, your wood grain. But that is how you do that. It's really pretty easy. And it looks, it, it's like for the amount of effort that it is to create wood grain, you get a lot of bang for your buck because it looks really good. But it doesn't require a lot of effort to get it put on there. So that's a nice wood grain that I have going there. and. Uh, I've managed to keep it a little bit more dark on this side and light on this side, which is kind of counter to the, what I've got going on in the wall in the background, and I like the feel of that. Okay, now while it's still damp, and if it's not enough damp, you can lay on a little bit more water. While it's still damp, I want to go ahead and start these shadows that are going to go under these things, because while it's wet, it can soften in like this, and we're going to want that to happen. Uh, and also, I'm going to want to use a lot of a really pretty purple with blue in it for my shadow color here. Um, I'm, I'm going to have, I've got yellow on this, in this tabletop, and I've got yellow in the corn. There's just a lot of yellow in this produce. And the opposite of that on the color wheel is purple, and that is the color you want to use for your shadows. I am going to add some blue in it to, to deepen it and to gray it down a little bit because I don't want it straight purple. That'll be too uh, too much for what... I want something a little bit more subtle than that. So I'm going to put a little bit of blue in it uh, just to gray it down a bit. And then I don't want my brush to be too, too wet. So take a little bit of the extra color out and then just start putting some shadow in here. And you can do it in the same way that you uh, applied the tabletop color. Just lay your brush down there and uh, drag it across there to spread your shadow color in there. And this, again, is the first layer of color. We're going to put some more dark color in, so don't worry that it's not as dark as you want it. It'll get there. I got a 
little bit darker blue right there and that's just already starting to get that shadow nice and deep and you just want to think about where the shadow would be remember our light source is coming from up here and shining this way so our shadows are going to be on this side and stretching out this way on the tabletop we'll have a little bit up in here and we have this nice shadow sticking out over here Okay, now, before that dries completely, you want to drag a little bit more blue into your um, shadow puddle and start adding a little bit of blue, a darker color, right up here at the edge of uh, the corn and the, the squash. All the different things, you're going to have a little bit darker color right up there where, the, where they're actually sitting on the tabletop. Drag that darker color in there and you see while it's still, if you do this while it's still wet, the color kind of spreads around and you get the, the, a nice soft edge shadow happening. If it spreads too much, just stop and get a, a clean damp brush and drag some of that color back out with the clean brush that's looking pretty good and I, I like to have nice vibrant shadows nice vibrant color in the shadows because it adds to the picture and makes it uh, more full of life and, and um, you know just it, it kind of glows it's more luminous um, it's just to me it's much more attractive to have that color in the shadow so now I'm going to add a bit more of the same colors that I'm using, Windsor Violet and um, Indigo. I could use some Ultramarine Blue here. <coughs> and put a little bit more dark stuff right up at the edge there. Just to really define where those things are sitting right down onto the table. My paper is still wet, but it's just not quite as wet as it was. And so the paint doesn't spread quite as far as it did on the previous layers. So just think about where your shadows would actually be darkest and that's where we're adding some darker color and I'm adding more of the ultramarine blue because that's going to darken it just the right amount and really kind of just tickling this color in with my uh, the tip of my brush and I've got really almost dry pigment on the brush at this point because I, I don't want it to move so much this part that I'm putting in now I really don't want it spreading that much so there's not uh, I mean you have to put a little water in it or else it isn't paint it won't come off the thing onto your brush but uh, but you want it a lot drier than the other paint that you just got put through putting on there now with this ultramarine on here, it is really, it's got some light and life in it and it just makes such pretty shadows on here. They glow, so they're still light even though it's in the shadow area. I think you can see that there and I'm I think I'm pretty much done with those shadows I'm going to do something with the corn to get the shadow side of the corn going here but I'm going to do that uh, 
point I paint the corn rather than doing that now. Okay, so let me see if I can get this all in the frame and check my time. Uh, I probably need to paint faster. <laughs> but we're, we're uh, pretty close to... to we're, we're way more than halfway done. All right, let's see that. That paper towel is done. So I'm gonna get a new paper towel. Make sure that this brush is clean. I don't want any blue or purple in my gourd. So we're gonna do this gourd now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put water on it. Because remember this painting is all about wet in wet. So that's good. Tilt this up. Boy, the, um, the, it's getting dark in my studio. I hope you can see good. I think that means the rain is coming back. Because the clouds have definitely rolled over. I don't have much sunlight coming in my windows at all. Okay, so water is all on the gourd. Now, if you have Naples yellow, Naples yellow is a really good color to put on this gourd. I don't have any in my palette. I don't use it often enough, so don't keep it in there. But I have found if I will take some yellow ochre and mix in a little bit of opera pink, I think it is. I might have got a little too much. So let me put some more yellow ochre in there and water that down pretty good. That is a good substitute for Naples yellow. And that's the right color for this gourd. So I'm gonna just start putting that on here. And you see it's a really watery mix. Um, I gotta wait for the screen to catch up. Back to having a bit of lag. Um, so anyway, I'm, I don't want to put a whole lot of pigment on there. This is very light colored gourd. So I'm going to just spread that first brush full of pigment that I put on there. It's probably enough to do the whole gourd. I'm going to spread that all over. And then what I'm going to do is put another brush full of it uh, down here in the bottom area. And just kind of pull that up and pull it up the back side of the gourd. And the underneath of the neck of it just just a little bit to give it some form there. I'll put a little bit right down in there, right around that stem. I'm going to leave it pretty light over here, but I do want to put a little bit more right at the bottom. Just kind of flick that up in there. Now I want to get even a little bit darker color right down the back of there. And just draw it right down in. A little bit right there as well. Now I want to go back into, um, actually I need a little bit more right on there. Let's, I want to show that roundness happening. Okay, now I'm going to go back into uh, some of my uh, blue, lavender, you know, kind of like a purpley gray color. And I want to lay some of that right on there. I want to be very careful about it because it will go to uh, the wrong color if I'm, if I'm, not cautious about it because mixing yellow and purple gets you a neutral. But I want to put a shadow on the uh, a little bit of shadow on the back side of this of this gourd because right down in here it will be in shadow. I'm going to put some much more violet color right down in there and just carefully drawing it up into there while it's still wet. It blends itself really nice and makes a good shadow back on that side. And that's about all I need to do there. Now I want to clean the paint out of this brush. 
and get it mostly dry. And then I'm going to take and draw some lines in here, which are actually lifting paint out of there. And that's going to put some of those kind of lines that would be on this gourd. They're very faint because they're, they're created from lifting the color off of here. Now, let's see, I may need to zoom in a little bit more so you can see what's happening there. No, I think you can see it. There's just some very faint light lines through there and they're giving that gourd its, you know, part of it, it the texture of the surface of the gourd would have that. Okay, now um, I'm going to, let's see here, let's go ahead and put in, let's do two things. We need a slightly smaller brush, get it wet with clean water, and I'm going to just clean up the bottom edge of this just of the least little bit and kind of pull some color out of these almonds here. And then I want to put I put a little bit more color behind them to make them show up a little better. Make sure that it has the appearance of um, of the wood grain. So now they they show up a little bit better there. The almonds do, and while they're wet, because I just uh, took the color off of them, let me go back to my round brush, and I'm just going to find me something that's kind of brownish on my paint palette. If I don't have anything really brown, I can mix some. Um, burnt sienna and a little bit of green. I still have the green on the puddle from that. And if I mix a little red or burnt sienna into it, I've got just the right amount of color. And I'm gonna lightly, lightly touch the tip of this brush right onto the moist paper there and put these little dots that make that look like an almond looks. So that's pretty good on that. Oops, out of the frame, sorry. Um, there we go. That's my almonds. And now I'm going to, um, I'm going to put the color on the walnut. That I'm going to put some of my purple puddle right into the uh, brown that I used for the dots on the uh, almonds. Put some purpley color into that. Might need to, uh, Put a little bit more red into it. it you want a really dark but kind of warm uh, gray brown and then just scrape that color right onto that almond there I mean to that walnut Try to keep it a little bit lighter if I can on the side where the light's coming from. Put the darker color back over here. I want to run it right down into that shadow that we put beneath it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, indigo and put a little bit of that up in there and then drag it over to the side and then get some um, Windsor Violet and make that line right there. Then get, uh, get back into your green puddle and really darken it up with either the Windsor Violet or, um, or, or the Indigo. And you want to put some dots of color in to this walnut. And they're sort of bigger dots and kind of spread out. Weird shaped ones. And if your purple is too purple, go over it with the indigo. Kind of mash that shadow right down 
into the part you got there on the table. And just deepen these shadows under this uh, almond just a little bit, a little bit right here. Like that. Now, uh, while I've got this brush in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and put the stems on to all of my produce. And I'm going to start with sap green. And throw that into the puddle of green that I have going on. And just keep adding more sap green till you get it a color that you like. That's a nice, uh, this, this would be the lightest color of, of green on your stems because we're going to put the light on and then we'll put the darker color on. So what I want to do here is this side is lighter. Let's put that right down there. And I'm not going to go into that bottom part there because I'm going to put that being uh, some some yellow orange color probably. Put that right in there and leave a little bit of this so I can pick up some yellow and just go straight into you know, I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up yellow and go straight back to the paper. And because I had some green in the brush, it gives a little bit of variation of color there. And with that still on my brush, I'm going to paint the top edge of the pumpkin stem. And then I want to switch to painting the front edge of this because remember where the light is coming from determines where your lighter areas are going to be. And I can pick up some of the darker color and pull that into there. And I want to get some even darker, so maybe just pick up some indigo. And we're going to put it right down the the side of this. You see I didn't get my brush slipped. I didn't quite get the light color where I wanted it over here. So let me do that again. And it's okay if it's not straight because it, it would probably be kind of twisted and gnarled looking in real life. Now I just got some indigo without a lot of wetness in it, some pretty dry paint. And, and it's just on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to draw some lines through here to create some texture on these stems. Looks pretty good. Okay, with that on my brush, I'm going to just put some color here. Actually, I want to get the lighter color on because that works good. So just put a little bit of color right onto that stem. over here. Try to keep the darker color on the left hand side of these, remembering where our light source is. And that's pretty good for that. Uh, now, once those are a little bit more dry, actually I could do it right now. I'm going to just get some yellow ochre and pull a little bit of um, either one of the, the reds or the violet or something like that into it just to mess it up just a little bit and uh, put some of that on there, put some Winifred on gold on it, maybe touch a little bit of green into it. It just needs a little mottled color right in the end of that stem there. I don't quite like how that one came out. So. 
Turn that back off there. Too green. I must have got yeah, got too much green on the brush there. Back into the um, yellow ochre. Put that lightly in there. Again in this one. I'm going to touch some more yellow into this one. And a little bit more right there. And if you want, you can touch a little green into it as well, a little of the sap green. It gives it a, a nice appearance that that stem's just been cut. You took it out of your garden to bring it in the house and bake it or something. All right, so the stems are done. Now I want to put the straw in, and then we'll do the corn last. So for the straw, put water on it, clean water. Oops, drip some water right there. I didn't want to do that. Oh, and I do. I, I like my pumpkin like it is. I might leave it like it is, or I might just glaze on a little bit more color to deepen the richness of the color of it. So I'm going to do this section, and then I'll come do that. Uh, I want to take some tan color, <coughs> which get one of your, like that puddle we just used for, for the gourd there, put a little tiny bit of green into that and it make, brings it to tan and then if you put enough water in it you can use it to paint your straw a nice tan color but we're going to want to not paint it solid. Just touch some color in. Because you got it wet it'll spread around pretty good and do some nice things. And You can keep it darker down here near the bottom where there's less light on it. And that color is so perfect, I'm going to go ahead and put some over here, even though I didn't get these wet. And I can spread it around just by putting water on the brush. And let's see, there's actually an area that should be the um, wall showing through back there, so I'm going to have to fudge on fixing that a little bit here. I've got some indigo and some Windsor Violet in this brush. Get most of the color out. Let's see if I'm close here. Yep, very close. Okay, so get this wall painted right in here. Good. Now back to painting this stuff. This color is perfect for this straw. I'm going to keep it darkest right up here where the um, where it's coming out from behind the acorn squash. And then I can add more water to my brush and just kind of spread that a little bit. Now I'm going to put some uh, quadrachrome gold right on these top bits where it's folded over. And then I just want to touch a little bit more in in a couple of spaces. Same over here, just touch some color in in a couple of couple of areas. Now I'm going to grab some um, let's see, let's put that right there. I'm gonna grab some purpley color, purpley brown, and and put a little bit more lines like that in here. And I want those to look like they're emanating out from the base of this corn like this. And again, as long as we're working on this wall, it's mostly uh, a damp paper. This is going to just spread right out and look perfect. Good. 
I'm kind of dry brushing just a little bit because my paper is starting to get more dry and I've got less water in my brush. Scratching that right on there and getting a little bit more purple into the color. Then I'll put a little bit of that uh, purely maroon. So I'm getting, whoops, that's too, too dry. Get a little bit of red color going on in there. because it looks pretty. That's pretty good. Now I could put a little bit of my uh, violet color right up under here. I did that on my other sample, and I think I'm liking the look of that right now, so I'm going to leave that alone and make a decision about that once I get the corn painted over here, about whether or not I want to put in more dark color there. Now this area is getting a little too solid color, so I'm going to use the back end of my paintbrush and just pull some lines through here. And in some places it pulls the paint away, and in others it creates a crease or a groove in the paper where the dark paint that's still wet can flow down into it. And make a dark line. That's pretty good for that. Except don't like this too bright area right here. So I'm going to put a little bit of a really light um, purpley blue on that to knock that down just a little bit. And then where it's going behind there, I want it to be sure and not be too white right there. Uh, once it's dry, I may, I may take a little bit of yellow and put a little bit more um, maybe it's it's probably dry enough. I'll show you right now. I've got this um, Aurelian yellow, which has a lot higher uh, opacity to it, and I can spread a little bit of this yellow in here, and it goes right over top of some of those other colors. And I like the look of that. So I like how that straw looks there. And I'm down to just painting the corn. So what I'm going to do for that is, first of all, put water all over the back uh, ear of corn. So I've got that nice and moist. Then I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I'm going to make that one kind of light color. I'll take that light tan color and just spread that over there for a base. Then that needs to dry till it does not have that sheen on it. So while I give that a minute to quit having the sheen on it, I'm going to take a drink of my water bottle. Um, it's still got a little too much sheen on it. If I if I put it on there now, let me just show you. Let's see if I can zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. I am going to use this. Uh, this is like a quarter inch flat angle brush. Make 
make sure it's clean. Okay, you know, uh, I'm going to pick up some of one of my, um, I, I want a brownish color a little darker than what I've got on there. So I'm just mixing a little bit of uh, where I had some reds going on on my palette next to some yellows. I just mixed those a little together. And now I'm going to take the front end of this brush and I'm just going to mash it on there. But you need to think about the fact that you've got rows of kernels on here. So you don't want to make random dots. Instead, you want to make uh, little marks like that, which hopefully you're being able to see there on the screen, so that you can um, see them as kernels but also the paper is still pretty wet, so it's really melting right down into what was there before. So it's a little too wet for this to be effective quite yet, but that's the general idea. So now I gotta let it dry just a smidgen more. But I'm gonna take that color and then I'm going to darken it a little bit more and do some more so that I end up with, with something that mimics the look of this corn here. I'll just make little dashes in a line and I'll use some different colors and see the color that we painted the background, that's kind of these really light, the lightest kernels in there are the background and I, I'm just adding some of this red and then I'll go back in and add some, excuse me, slightly darker. Then I'll add some, uh, some that I've added a lot of more of the violet to, or maybe some of the, um, uh, indigo. I think would do it. Um, and then I've got some bright yellow kernels in here. So I just uh, am going to mimic this. Uh, but like I said, my paper needs to get a bit more dry. It is, it's kind of handy to have this sitting right here on the table in front of me because I can look at it and, and kind of use that for a guide. As I'm putting this color on here, let's see if I can get some more. It's, it's staying a little better now. So I'm going to add a little bit more brown to my color. And just get some of these on here. Just Remember to make rows of these marks, not just random dots, because it's supposed to be kernels of corn. And um, don't let don't do it when your paper is still too uh, damp, because they spread way out. All right now, I'm adding some of that perylene magenta. Puddle's kind of drying up, so I might have to add a bit more water too. But if I have too much water on my brush and too much water on the paper, they combine to make me not get the marks that stay and look like the kernels. Let's see, I'm just using that again the front end of my um, angled brush. I'm just putting these little kernel shaped marks on here. That's pretty good for that. I'm going to add some of the uh, little puddle I had going that was the, uh, the background color here, or the shadow color, the, the Windsor Violet and the Blue mixed. And so that makes an even slightly darker color. So I can kind of fill in some kernels with that color. And because the paper's damp, it does melt down into it a little bit, but again, you don't want it 100% wet and, and having it really lose all its shape. Now I've added some more darker colors, so I've got some slightly darker kernels happening here. I'm trying to keep my hand remembering that these are supposed to be rows of kernels. That 
looks pretty good and I think what I'm going to do now is, add, is rinse those colors out and add some yellow kernels because I do have some bright yellow ones in there and I can use either the Aurelian yellow or some quinacridone gold either one works for this in fact you can kind of mix it up do some of both if you want to that one's a little too brown that was the quinacridone I want some bright yellow ones in here and it's, it's very tempting to cover up all of the bases that are in there but there are some light colored uh, kernels in here so you got to remember to leave some of that background showing and that's probably enough that I can call that one done I'm going to do one last thing rinse all of that yellow out of my brush because uh, the opacity of it will will wreck what I'm about to do next if I leave that in there so I've got to get all of that out of my brush and then I'll just pick up some of this um, this purpley color and I've got a good bit of water in there I don't want it to be really watery but I want it to be dark enough to do some good and I'm just going to lay a line right down right at the edge there to show like the shadow that's happening as that ear of corn which is round starts to dip down and uh, this side of it goes down so we need it to be a little bit in shadow I don't want it to be a straight line and I don't want it to be too dark there is light that's good now I'm going to pick up some of the blue and I want this one to have um, not much water in it at all because I'm going to use it very edge of my brush and just kind of draw some some lines between the rows of kernels and then you don't want it to be a solid line it just needs to be kind of barely there and that is the first ear of corn done so I'm going to go ahead and do the next one same way you start with clear water Get that ear wet. And then this one, I'm going to make this one be more of the dark red colors. This one's got almost all the really dark colors. So I'm going to move that one up here. We can see that one. That's my model right now. And so that means I'm going to start with a much darker base color that's more red. Put that on there. And I can even go ahead and get some of the uh, darker purple and put it on this side if I want to. And get a start on making that have its shape that it needs to have and then we're back again to the letting it uh, dry enough to get the sheen off of it there's a lot of waiting in watercolor I think while I'm waiting for that to do its thing I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my yellow color and just glaze some straight yellow right over top of my pumpkin here. This is just Aurelian, Aurelian yellow. I guess I know how to say it right, but anyway, I'm glazing that right on top of my pumpkin, and it just deepens that color of that pumpkin really, really nicely. It's it's rich and glowing. Could add a little bit of the quinacridone gold, but I don't want it to go brown. I'm going to keep it yellow. And you can't do this while the uh, orange 
color of the pumpkin is still wet, it will really mess up the paint, paint that's underneath. But once it's dry, you can lay this additional color on here and it just really pulls the richness right out of there. So rich, pretty pumpkin. tiny bit more color right there on that line and I think I like that I guess I'll put a little bit more purple right back here darken it a little bit more I think that will help it That looks pretty. There's my reference photo getting in the way again. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit smaller now. I think we're to the point that you're probably ready to see your own painting more than my reference. Okay, and now this is about right, so I'm going to take my uh, small angled brush again, and I'm going to start with some kind of red color. I'll just put some, some red kernels in here. I need to have not quite as much water in my brush. Caroline Magenta is making nice red kernels on there now. Remember to keep them going in rows. And alter your color. some uh, burnt sienna in here. Oops, I just got it way too wet. That looks good. Just because it adds another layer of color. And I think the kernels get a little smaller as they get out here toward the end as well. And then the very tip end usually doesn't have a lot of kernels on it, so remember to leave that, you know, kind of scantily done. I'm going to add some more of a darker, uh, I've got some pearline violet, which is nice and dark. the way that this comes out detailed but also because I'm doing it on wet paper it's still got a little bit of that loose watercolor quality going on okay 
That one's pretty good. I'm going to add a couple of bits of yellow in there to it. And for this one, I am going to use the uh, Aurelian because I need that opaque quality going on in order to cover or to show up against uh, the rest of what's already on here. And I don't need a lot of it, just a little bit of the bright yellow color in a couple of spots, and that's pretty good. That one I'm going to call done. So I'm down to the very last ear of corn. And start with clean water. My last ear of corn that I bought at the store is the lightest ear of all of them that I have. It looks like this. So I'm going to keep this one really light here. You can see it's how it compares to the other ones. This, this was like the first one that we painted, and then we did the, the more red one. So that's sort of what we have going on right there. That we did this one, the farthest back one, and then we did the mostly red one. And now we've got this lighter colored one in the front. So put those back there, put this one here where I can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and paint a really light uh, sort of yellow base on here. Put a little color in it, and then with a clean, wet brush, I'm just spreading that color around. And then because this one is, again, curved around, um, actually I probably needed to put a little bit more of that color right up against the edge there, so that's got that shadow happening or the roundness. Um, what I want to do though is to put some of this same color here. So that was Windsor Violet and uh, a little bit of what I've really got in the top there is the um, Ultramarine Blue and I want to use the Ultramarine and the Windsor Violet and put a little bit of that on this edge here. While it's wet, and I'm going to add some more water. I'll do another little stripe while it's wet. And that helps add uh, the look of the, the shadow and the, the round form happening before we even get started painting the kernels on there. And it works really good to do it while it's wet. And so now it's going to look like our shadow is just kind of continuing up onto the corn there. And you're going to have a, a, a slightly less distinct edge between your shadow and your corn. Okay, so this is, um, it's necessary to let this one dry a little bit to get most of that sheen off there because as long as the sheen is there, we, um, we can't get distinct kernels going. I think I put too much water on that one in the back back there. So I'm going to touch up a little bit on that one while I wait for the one in the front to, to dry. stomach is growling. It thinks that we've been painting long enough. But we're almost done, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. Let's 
and just we're quite ready. Um, I'm going to go ahead with some yellow. Yeah, this is working. Okay, so these yellow ones in here. some quinacridone gold to my puddle to make it a little bit browner. A little bit less water. Remembering to keep my mind aware of where my rows of kernels are going. Some of this is too wet and it's spreading a little too much down here. I'll just have to do it again in a minute when it doesn't run quite as much. Okay, now um, I'm going to put a little bit of purple into that and kind of make a neutral color because I have some sort of gray kernels in this ear. Put a little bit more purple in there to darken it a little bit. And I think I need a definite more purple in it. I'm going to add a little green too because I don't want it to be straight Windsor Violet out of the two going on here. And at this point, I just put more on there until I feel like I've got it about the right uh, amount of color on this one because it is mostly a lighter uh, a lighter ear all over. I feel like it's probably time to stop on this one. I'm just going to use this light color that's on my brush and put just a few of these lines between these rows. And they're not everywhere. Just kind of to give a little bit of a hint.
there. That's pretty good. I like how that one looks. And I'm going to call this finished. So let me uh, switch. Let's see if this one shows my whole tabletop. That's got the whole picture in it. And I like it. Looks pretty good. Now, once again, I'm going to let it dry the whole way before I take it off of here, and then I'll just loosen it from this. And uh, if I was framing this, I would kind of crop, I would put it in a frame size that cuts off about an inch from the bottom and maybe an inch from the top, maybe a little bit in from this side. But anyway, overall, I think it's a really pretty picture, and um, so I will just say uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, and thanks for watching and painting along if you did, painting with me, and I appreciate it. So, um, let's see here, uh, I did want to say, let's put this one up, uh, I did want to say that I do have some classes that I'm offering for uh, the Christmas holidays that are going to be live uh, via Zoom. And uh, so they're fully interactive and you can uh, get feedback from me if you desire it. If you do want to take one of those classes and you're camera shy, you don't want to be on the, the, uh, the, your camera, it's not required. You can keep your camera turned off if you want to do that. Um, but I'm offering those classes and I have individual classes that are like six dollars each and then I have one that's I, I bundled several things together they're all holiday figures uh, like a, a woodland Santa and I've got some Victorian carolers and uh, just things like that that are fun to paint for the holidays and I made one that's a bundled together three sessions on consecutive Wednesdays in December and that's $25 for that set and uh, if you do the class with me once the class is done, uh, a day or two later, I can send you uh, a link to the recording of the session, and you can either just access that link or download it to your computer. Either way, you get lifetime access to the recording of the class. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, and if you're interested in that, you can check that out. The link to that is one of those. It's the bottom link uh, that's showing across the screen right now. So I guess... Uh, right I can't see if I'm pointing in the right place because we got lag again but anyway somewhere right in there are all those links written in yellow text uh, there's my website my YouTube channel which you know obviously and um, the bottom link is to where you can go and learn about my holiday virtual painting classes if you are interested uh, so there they are uh, and I Again, thank you for painting with me today. I uh, hope you have a really wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving week next week. Uh, Till next time, see ya.